My grandmother, who lived at the top of the next house, was a lady of capernosity and function. She had money and lay in bed all day drinking porter or malt and taking pinches of snuff and talking to the neighbours that would call up to tell her the news of the day. She only left the bed to go down one flight of stairs and visit the lady in the back drawing room, Miss McCann. And Miss McCann worked a sewing machine, making habits for the dead. Sometimes girls from our quarter got her to make dresses and costumes, but mostly she stuck to the habits. They were a steady line, she said, and you didn't have to always be buying patterns, for the fashion didn't change, not from summer to winter. They were a, like a long brown shirt with a hood attached, that was closed over the person's face before the coffin lid was screwed down. A sort of little banner hung on one arm, uh, made of the same material, and four silk rosettes in each corner. And in the middle, the letters I-H-S, which meant, Miss McCann said, I have suffered. My grandmother and Miss McCann liked me more than any other kid they knew. And I liked being liked and could only admire their taste. My Aunt Jack, who was my father's aunt as well as mine, sometimes came down from where she lived, up near the basin, where the water came from before they started getting it from Wicklow. My Aunt Jack said it was much better water at that. And Miss McCann said she ought to be a good judge. For my Aunt Jack was funny. She didn't drink port or our malt or take snuff. And my father said she never thought much about men either. She was also very strict about washing herself very often. And my grandmother took a bath every year, whether she was dirty or not but she was in no way bigoted in the washing line in between times. My Aunt Jack made terrible raids on us now and again to stop snuff and drink and make me grandmother get up in the morning and wash herself and cook meals and take food with them. My grandmother was a gilder by trade and served her time in one of the best shops in the city and was getting a man's wages at 16. She liked stuff out of the pork butchers and out of cans and didn't like boiling potatoes. But she said she was no skivvy and the chip man was better at it. When she was left alone, it was a pleasure to eat with her. She always had cans of lovely things and spicy meat and brawn and plenty of seasoning fresh out of the German man's shop up the road. But after a visit from Aunt Jack, she'd have to get up and wash for a week. And then she'd have to go and make stews and boil cabbage and pig's cheeks. Aunt Jack was very much up for sheep's heads too. They were so cheap and nourishing. But my grandmother only tried it once. She had been a first class gilder in Eustace Street, but never had anything to do with sheep's heads before. When she took it out of the pot and laid it on the plate, she and I sat looking at it in fear and trembling. It was bad enough going into the pot, but with the soup streaming out of its eyes and its big teeth clenched in a very bad temper, it had put the heart crossways in you. My grandmother asked me in a whisper if I ever thought a sheep could look so vindictive and as it was more like the head of an old man and would I, for God's sake, ever take it and throw it out the window? And the sheep kept glaring at us. But I came the far side of it and rushed over to the window and threw it out as quick as a flash. My grandmother had to drink a baby pair of whiskey, for she wasn't the better of herself. Afterwards, she kept what she called her stock pot on the gas. A heap of old bones, as she said herself, and any old muck that had come in handy to have boiling there, night and day, on the glimmer. She and I ate happily of coop, meat and California pineapple and sockoid salmon 
and the pot of good nourishing soup was always on the gas. Eve the Van Jack was to come down the chimney like the holy souls at midnight. My grandmother said she didn't begrudge the money for the grass. Not when she remembered the look that sheep's head was giving her. And all she had to do with the stock pot was throw in another sup of water every now and again. And a handful of old rubbish that the pork butcher might send over in the way of lights or bones. My Aunt Jack thought a lot about barley too, so we had a package of that lying beside the gas and threw a sprinkle in any time our foot was heard on the stairs. The stock pot bubbled away on the gas for years after, and only when my grandmother was dead did someone notice it. They tasted it, spat it out just as quick, and wondered what it was. Some said it was paste, and more said it was gold size. And there were other people, and they maintained this was glue. But they all agreed on one thing. It was dangerous tack to leave lying around where there might be young children. And in the heel of the rail, it went out the same wind as the sheep's head.